Hey everyone, Mix Ray Ray here. Um, why are my nails dirty? And my hands are pink again. Wow, I should stop rocking the table. Um, so, hi everyone. Today I will be testing out some black watercolor paper because I have had this in my watercolor arsenal for a while and I have been, excuse me while I get it, um, I've been wanting to use it for a while and I just haven't figured out how, but that's exactly what this video is going to be about. We're going to learn how to use black watercolor paper. Um, this is Stonehead. I think that's usually like the most common of the, of the watercolor papers. Um, is there already a page torn out? Do I? Did I try doing it already once? I don't remember. So it won't count. Let's see. This is 8 by 10. Um, it's a little small, I guess, to, compared to some people. Um, I always get recommended through the internets of like, you know, I'm gonna... Get a knife for that, because I don't want to tear this. Let's use my utility blade. It's an exacto knife, but I have two. One exact, one specifically for utility purposes, and one specifically for craft purposes. I guess this would fall under both, but this one was the first one I picked up. No, nope. come on. Oh come on! Just come on. Oh no, I tore it. No! Maybe because I use this one so much, it's a little dull. I have other knives. I haven't used this one that much though. It shouldn't be dull. Maybe it's just because it's the glue. Let's see if that helped though. Not too much. Don't poke your finger in. Okay, there we go. I think we got it. Ooh, I don't like that squeaky noise. Nope, I don't like it. I know how some people can be like, well, I'm making the noise so it doesn't bother me as much. That's true with some things for me, not all of them. So, let's get this out of the way. Big globs of paper is a huge distraction for me. Um, let's see. And, so, we have our paper. Give me one second. Where is the... Let's see. So... This is a folder of all the previous things I've done technically this year on my watercolor journey. I guess I call it a journey. If I had a black watercolor painting, it would have been in here. I have everything by the month. Oh, no, here it is. Yeah. So, super simple, I guess. Uh, just outer space. I guess I was playing with the water, uh, the black paper itself. I think I used gouache for this though because I didn't think the watercolor would be that, what do you call it? What's the word? Visible? Because it's a transparent medium. So everyone is, what? Ah, uh, May. Okay, so all the big ones I guess I didn't do. But this time I will be using watercolor and I have a little bit of a simple method of figuring out how it's going to work on here. Nothing too elaborate, but it does involve tape. So, excuse the hair. I'm just everywhere today. Uh, I don't need my glasses on. That will ruin my eyesight. Hi, thank you. Um, let's see. Obviously, we're gonna. Yes, phone, thank you. I'm aware that I can get messages right now. That's not what I actually want. Um, oh, that's not gonna help either. But, there you go. Anyway, sorry for that. Um, can you guys see it? Let's put it right there where you guys can see it a little better. I'm just doing this so it'll stick, but... Oh, 
I'm not going to be using all of the paper. This is going to be a study paper. And no, let's do a little more like this. I don't think that's even with the other side, but that's not going to matter too much. So let's do this. Come on, break. There we go. Thank you. Let's do a little bit of this. I'm going to do, I guess, a bit of a thumbnail painting. Let's just put that right there for now. There we go. Okay, well, unfold that one little corner. It has to be perfect. I can't, well, as perfect as it can be. I'm realistic, but I do demand some neatness. Okay, let's do that. Also, putting the tape on there made it not straight, but that'll work. We have this area to test our paint on, and we have this area for swatching and playing around. Um, I don't know where to put the water, but okay, let's see. Today, I want to work with my Winsor Newton compact set that I got. I might, I might get the inks out. Um, I have some like calligraphy inks because watercolor and, and ink, watercolors and inks go really well together. I might use this is um, it's a metallic watercolor set. They were I bought this on Etsy. It's from a shop on there called Poems About You. I really really like these watercolors. They smell amazing. Like it's like. There's like clove oil in here to help as a binder or a preservative. I'm not sure which one, but I love these so much. They're amazing. I didn't use them very much, obviously, but I want to. So like black watercolor paper, metallics, perfect. I know enough to that that will be a perfect match. Um, so let's get into it. One second let me readjust all of these because I have not figured out how to put these back into their holding spot <clears throat> no don't be sticky okay no Is that will that work no maybe will that work no maybe who knows Let's just keep it small for now. I don't think I want to use all of the colors. And I don't think I need to use the little brush either. So I'll set that to the side. Let's start off with at least the... Okay, I can't. Give me a second. Understand you. I don't understand any of this. Okay. Sorry, my phone's doing things. So let's get, let's prep these colors. Um. So I am just going to like hyper speed up this swatching process um, because I need to make videos that even my attention span will enjoy watching. And this whole swatching process took me like 25 minutes. And so if I 
keep that in with all the other videos I'm still editing or all the other parts of this video I'm still editing this video will be very long and that won't make me happy but if you want to see this whole swatching process um, in real like real time not sped up time and hear me ramble all through it I will have the 25 minute video of just the swatching up on my patreon for any of my art tier um, pa patrons so enjoy the rest of the video and maybe you won't hear from post-process Brianna again so happy times Everybody. So I'm back. I had a healthy snack. Um, got some water, had my paints dry, had time to correct, um, look up stuff to correct myself from just a little bit earlier. So one more. I have to drink a little bit more water. Okay, so I will correct myself right now. This paper is actually the 100% cotton paper, um, the Stonehenge black watercolor paper. It is the Van Gogh that um, I looked up on it and it said it was actually 100% cellulose paper. Um, so that does not really mean like I'm not going to feel different about it. I still have to play around. I still have to get up the, um, the gusto, I guess is a word, um, to use it because that was actually the one that like I bought first but it was stuck in Sweden and so it took me a while to go and get it but um, I have my sketch little thumbnail out I figured what's more standard than like a bowl of fruit um, and so I have like a little rough sketch in there I have my as you can kind of see I have my paints swatched in here I just have like a basic four colors I'm using a different brush because it's a smaller painting and I will need to put in more details. Well, yeah, more details than like a basic swatch color down um, for that. So now that you, now that we're all on the same page, let's get started.
So, what did we learn from black watercolor paper? Well, personally, I learned two things. One, don't trust tape on any kind of paper. Like, you saw me peel this off, right? Like, that's horrible. You saw the tape. And secondly, waiting for artistic inspiration does not trump actual foundational practice of drawing. Like, you guys saw me paint this, you can tell it's supposed to be a fruit bowl. And like, sure, abstractly, it's a bowl of fruit. But I could, you guys saw my owl painting, I could totally draw better than this. This is actually like a month or so, rounding a month, I'm not sure if I'm rounding down or up, um, without actually like, mindfully practicing drawing and so yeah there's that but those are just personal qualms like for actual black watercolor paper um this is actually very different from working with normal watercolor paper i found my i found the i found it again um like you have to work up to your light so it's almost like acrylics or water or oil paints in a sense um then starting with your bright and then darkening it up. You have to have a very good sense of like your color values um, because like your your colors don't act the same way as they would in brights. Like you can see this right here, this is finally really red, but like your oranges don't act the same, your yellows stand out so much, your blues well, I mean, this is kind of this is supposed to be green, but like your greens and blues are almost not, like almost not there. Like even from like here, you can tell. I guess that would also depend on the watercolor that you use. I assume, I assume this is why when I was looking up references to black watercolor paper and like get inspiration for like this, um, most people were using gouache or metallics because those stand out and they you have a you have a less you have less of a challenge um retuning your your idea of values um i really wish i could have used my metallic watercolors but i just wasn't feeling it you know um so i guess this was good this is a good little black watercolor study um, nothing, nothing ever really needs to be perfect with these things and um, you can kind of tell that this is supposed to be fruit it's at least colorful in the camera it's really a lot better than like in person you can tell like I try to do like somewhat of background so you can distinguish it from the black um, the tape also helps because it gets rid of some of its sheen um, but yeah that was my study in black watercolor um, thank you so much for watching. I very much appreciate it, and I'll see all you guys in the next one.